Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, today I'll be doing another book review and this time it is of a book that I just finished reading quite recently and I read it pretty much in its entirety at work while I was on my lunch hour and if you want to know how I did that go ahead and watch my previous video uh, the video about tips on how to find more time and motivation to read and uh, hopefully you'll find that useful but without any further um, rambling I'll go ahead and get into the review and the book the book that I'm reviewing today is The White Queen by Philippa Gregory um, it is a book that probably a lot of you know probably a lot of you have read um, it's quite a popular book this is a very popular author of historical fiction and uh, I had read another book by Philippa Gregory before it was the Bolin inheritance and um, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into by reading this book I was familiar with the style of Philippa Gregory kind of a very um, easy to read very easygoing kind of writing um, her books are more meant to be entertainment rather than scholarly works of history um, and I just I kind of went into reading this book with an attitude that this is the kind of book that is supposed to entertain me um, but before I get into actually reviewing the book let me talk a little bit about the plot and the time of history that this is happening in and um, the White Queen is set in um, England in Great Britain um, around the 1400s the mid 1400s I guess before the Renaissance started taking place if you will at the transition before between the Dark Ages and the Renaissance in Great Britain and uh, obviously it's based on true events so most of the facts of the novel are true but it's sort of stretched out um, a lot and the, the puzzle is completed with things that the author kind of um, speculated on and obviously the dialogue everything is is not really hasn't really happened but the main events of the novel are true and that's sort of what Philippa Gregory's writing seems to be like to me and it's taking place in the mid 1400s um, around the time of a lot of turmoil in um, in Great Britain and uh, the Cousins War was happening at that time this book is actually part of a trilogy um, that's the Cousins War and this is um, kind of covering part of that period um, but all it was about is that there was a dispute as to uh, who is rightfully um, supposed to be on the throne of England and uh, basically to make a long story short the throne of the current King Hen Henry that was sitting on the throne um, his claim to the throne was basically challenged by his cousin who thought that he is supposed to be on it because he has more of a claim to it because of um, of his proximity to the previous king and you know just all of that nonsense with them being with family ties and and how that all works anyways um, this book starts out as the cousin of the king pretty much in battle overthrows the the king that was before him and the country's in turmoil and there are two sides uh, that the people seem to be divided on one of them is um, the side the Lancaster side which is the side that supports the the king that was just overthrown and then there's the York side this is the side that supports the cousin the young guy who just came in and decides that he's gonna be king he's rightfully king he just won the battle he just proclaimed himself king and um, so the country is divided and then this heroine the main heroine I guess the white queen um, of this novel 
uh, she belongs to the House of Lancaster, so she supports the previous king that was just overthrown. And she, at the beginning, loathes the idea that there's a boy king, uh, this young man who just decided to be king with the help of his allies. So um, her husband had just died in battle fighting for the Lancaster house. She still has um, two sons and she's a widow and she has lost some of her estates so she just decides to walk on the way that the new king is supposed to be riding his horses with some people on and she just decides to go there with her two sons and meet him on on the road and kind of ask him to restore her properties to her that are right, rightfully hers because she's a widow and she you know she has to have them so you know long story short she meets him but then she kind of despite herself falls in love with him they have an affair they decide to marry in secret and she becomes queen and basically changes sides and from then on pretty much the premise of the author is that she influences the events in English history tremendously and she's a key participant in what happens um, in history afterwards and the course that it takes. So, um, now that I've confused you <laughs> with my plot summary, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you my thoughts um, about this book. And please take these with a grain of salt because people are bound to have different opinions about different books. That's totally normal and I respect your opinion if you have liked this book because I'm going to have to disagree with you and say that I was kind of disappointed by this book personally. Now I totally understand that a lot of people love this book and that's totally fine. This is not saying anything bad about you. Um, but I was personally disappointed and let me tell you a few reasons why. I went into this book, as I told you at the beginning, to be mostly entertained. I didn't read it to gain an insightful view on history, and I wasn't expecting that, so I wasn't trying to be unfair to the author. And even though I did learn a few things about history, you know, I could have learned those by just going to the Wikipedia page and I would have learned a lot more detail. Um, but still, I knew a little bit more than I knew before in, uh, English history. Uh, about English history, uh, because I'm definitely not a historian, definitely not really a good, um, I don't have good knowledge of history. So I did learn a little bit, but in terms of entertaining me, this book really fell short. And especially the last half, it was kind of going downhill for me. And there are a few reasons why. Um, I feel throughout the novel, I felt, especially in the last half, I felt that I wasn't really there. You know that feeling when you're reading a book where you're so sucked into the action, you feel like you're almost there, you feel like you can feel what the characters are feeling, you feel like you can feel their anger, or you can feel their joy, or you can feel their sensory, like what they're experiencing sensory-wise. I was never doing this book, except for a few moments at the beginning, I was never really feeling that. It's almost like I was just reading like a transcript of a dialogue from interviews whenever there was, the characters were talking to each other. And whenever they weren't talking to each other, I feel like I was just reading like some, some really like disconnected events kind of told in a very hurried manner. It's not that they were complicated or dry necessarily, but I just never really felt like I was sucked in and I was there and I was really feeling that I was there. You know what I mean? Um, I hope that I'm being pretty clear about that. If not, just let me know. Another thing that I didn't like about this book is I didn't like the main character. I, I know this book is supposed to portray her in a very favorable light, I never throughout this book really was able to relate to her. She just seemed like a very weird character in that one part of the book she was one way, one part of the book she was completely different. 
in on one part of the book, all she cares about is how to marry her relatives to different people so that she, they can get more money and she can get more power. And then she turns around 50 pages later and decides that she doesn't care about that, that all she cares about is that her family's safe, her sons are safe. And then she turns around the next moment, she's like, oh no, but they have to be married to this guy and this guy and this woman and that woman so that I can get those lands and those connections. And it was just sort of like, I didn't really understand exactly what was driving her. I didn't really know the inside, like what was really driving her. Um, and it, it's like one, one event when her brother's wife dies and she loved her sister-in-law and her brother's wife dies um, of some disease and the next thought she has is, okay, whom can I marry him with that's gonna like be nice for me and my family, like set us up and make, make us more powerful. So I just really couldn't relate to her and it's almost like the author was at some points kind of reminding herself like, oh wait, she has to be portrayed in a favorable light. Let me insert this little thing here, like how she's like crying for her son so that the readers will think that she's supposed to be a good person. I just, I feel like it was just kind of a not very well thought out way of how to portray the main character. Really, I, I just really, it's not that I didn't relate to her, but I also feel like I didn't really know her, and she's in, in the book quite a lot, you know, because she's the main character, obviously. So that, that was one thing. I just, I really didn't care for the main character at all. And, um, okay, moving on. Another thing I didn't like about the book is that it was insulting my intelligence just all throughout, because the chapters are very short. Some chapters are like one page, some chapters are a page and a half, some chapters are three pages, some chapters are longer but they're divided into like mini chapters. And then every single new chapter, the author feels the necessity to recap what just happened in the previous chapter. And so on and so on and so on. It's like, do you really think I'm so stupid that I can't recall what just happened in the other chapter? I mean, it's, it's like, I'm not going to read this book over a period of 25 years. Like. I'm not going to read one chapter in one year and then another chapter in another year. And it was just kind of like a waste of space and kind of insulting to me at some points. I was like, come on now, I just read about this. You don't have to recap it for me. You really don't have to recap it. It's not like I just ripped the chapter that I just read and tossed it in the trash. And you have to just tell me what happened in the chapter before so that I don't get confused. Speaking of not getting confused, the writing is very clear, and that's, it can be a good or a bad thing. Um, the writing is very clear, however, um, it, that has its advantages in that, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to read, it's, you know, it's easier to comprehend, which is a good thing. However, her writing crosses into overly simple, like, just completely lacking any kind of sophistication. Um, it, it was almost like just no thought, no real thought was put into the style of the writing besides it being pure and simple and recap everything that just happened and keep the, the dialogue between people as simple as possible. And I just, I just didn't like that. And speaking of dialogue, sometimes it just seemed very unnatural. Like, are you kidding me? do people really talk like that to each other? And it, it's, it was just really silly at times. You know, it wasn't always this way, but some dialogue just seemed very like, it was almost like people don't talk to each other that way. Like a mother and a daughter don't talk to each other that way. I know she was queen of England, but still, it was just so dry and strange. Like, um, it was, like, if you talk about, let's say your uncle, if you talk to your daughter about her uncle, do you really have to say, oh, it's Edward, he is Duke of Gloucester, for example, he's not really in the book. But like, people don't really have to say that. For example, when I talk to my mom, she doesn't say to me, well, remember your uncle, he was born in this city, and he's, his last name is this. 
do you remember him? Oh yes, mom, I do. Like, I feel, I felt like the dialogue was like that at times, and I felt like the author was doing that on purpose so that, to refresh people's memory on like who those people are that they're talking about. And it was just so silly. It was insulting me. I was like, please, come on, people are not that dumb. They're, they know who that person is. You don't have to like refresh their memory as to like what territories they hold and like what their uh, duke of what are they. <laughs> so, yeah, they were just... Oh, I just, I'm so sorry that I didn't like this book. I expected to like it because I, everyone was telling me it's awesome. Um, but I just, I'm so sorry I, I didn't and I kept wanting to finish it. And I was sitting up at lunch and I was like, oh my god, okay, I have a hundred more pages. Just, just get it over with and review it and then you never have to read it again. So, unfortunately, I was disappointed in this book. I went in trying to be entertained while learning a little bit of history. I learned a little bit of history, um, not an enlightening amount, uh, but to be entertained I really wasn't, and I was a little bit insulted many times because of the oversimplifying of things that this author does. And also I couldn't really relate to anyone in this book. I just felt like they were strangers to me, you know, they weren't really developed enough for me to be able to in some way relate to them. Like I think you can relate to even the worst of pe of people if they're if some of their inner thoughts, if some of their inner drives were exposed to you. And I I feel like the author didn't really do a good job with this book. So would I recommend this book to anyone? Not really. I mean, if you love everything that Philippa Gregory puts out, you'll probably love this book as well. Many of you already probably do. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. I personally was not very happy with it. So that being said, um, let me know your thoughts um, about this book. And also, if anyone has read this book and kind of feels the same way that I do, please let me know. I would love to kind of learn about people's perceptions of this book. Especially if you don't have such a good view and why. Because it seems like to me everyone's been saying it's amazing. So, uh, I'd love to hear someone that kind of stands out. <laughs> so anyways, um, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I really appreciate your time, and um, I hope to talk to you soon, and uh, have a great day.